Hello. So this is my first time like actually sitting down ready to film since I've gone back to work. So I don't know if I ever talked about this on here, but I didn't work for like six or eight weeks because of things, you know, you're alive right now. You know what I'm talking about. And this is the first time that I have had you know, the, the organization and the mind to actually get ready, sit down and do this. So I'm happy to be here and I hope you are too. So hi, welcome. If you're new, I'm, I'm Morgan. I don't really say my name on this channel almost ever anymore. I used to say it at the beginning of every video, fun fact, but welcome. If you're new, I'd love it if you'd subscribe. It means a lot to me. Anyway, today's video is going to be Probably not relevant to everyone, but relevant to a lot of people in at least some capacity at this point, I think. It's gonna be my skincare routine for wearing a mask all day, most days. So in a lot of places now, wearing a face mask is you know, suggested or mandatory in some areas. Uh, I have to wear one at work, so I am wearing it for a significant period of time, at least four days a week. And I do wear one if I leave my house to go to like a grocery store or whatever. So when I was told that this was going to be the future, that this is what was going to happen, all I could think of was my poor face. You know, I'm not opposed to wearing a mask. I know that there are people who, who have differing opinions on this topic. I personally don't mind it, it's fine. I was literally just worried about my skin. Like I have acne. I was really nervous that wearing a face covering for extended periods really destroy my skin. You know, when we started toying with the idea of going back to work, I really started thinking about what I was going to do to help prevent my acne from really flaring up during this period, if that makes any sense. So I have no idea how long this period's going to last, but I have made a lot of shifts in what I'm doing. My skincare routine is very different. I do wanna mention that I don't wear makeup from my lower lash line down when I'm wearing a face mask. So I was kind of toying with the idea of doing a get ready with me mask edition, and I just didn't know if that would be interesting to anyone. So if you are interested in that, please let me know because I really would like to make that video. It's just, I don't know if there's interest. Okay, so let's just talk. So like I said, the, the issue at the forefront of my mind when this all came to be was basically, my skin's gonna freak out. I mean, every friend that I have that's a nurse or works in a hospital or is an essential worker has basically said they have gotten mask knee. And that is scary for me because I have such acne prone skin. And you know, if you're also acne prone, like being put in that position where you could definitely potentially really break out, it's like, it's kind of scary. Like that sounds really stupid. I know there's much scarier things at the moment, but you know, breaking out is not fun. Having acne is not fun for anyone. I mean, you know, it's not an inherently bad quality. It's not that it's bad, but acne hurts. Acne doesn't feel good. Nobody likes having acne, right? So we do what we can to prevent where we can. So I kind of sat down, sat with myself, sat with my products and thought about like, what can I do to minimize the potential for breakouts, irritation, all the things what can I do and this is the routine that I came up with it is really minimal if you've watched my skincare videos before if you've like heard me talk about skincare or whatever you know that I am a skinimalist kind of anyway because I have really sensitive skin I have uh, rosacea I'm acne prone and so I just try to keep things on the lesser side because my skin gets overwhelmed easily so I am I, I err on the side of minimal anyway but this is even more minimal than I am used to. So yeah, that brings me to my next point, which is what is my skin type? So that you can like kind of calibrate your understanding of how you could implement things like this in your routine if you want to. So I am at this moment, what I would call normal in terms of skin type. I did a skincare diet prior to this. When I wasn't working, I used cleanser and SPF and that's basically it. And throughout that period, my skin changed a lot. And now I would say that I'm normal. Like I'm not oily, I'm not dry. I just sit perfectly in the middle. I am sensitive, I'm so sensitive. I have rosacea, I am super acne prone. And yeah, that's, I have really reactive skin that kind of goes along with having rosacea, I think. And that's part of the sensitive aspect. Like my skin just is very reactive to stuff, 
sometimes. And that brings me to why this is so minimal. And the reason that it's so minimal is because I truly believe that the more you put on your skin, regardless of what it is or what's in it, the more likelihood you have of irritation. And that's definitely true for me, like compound exposure to just stuff can really make me red, it can make me break out, it can cause congestion, it can do all manner of things. So I knew that whatever I was putting on my face was going to be sandwiched in between a mask and my skin and also like the hot air circulating your breath beneath that mask, it just, it just, sounded like a recipe for bad things for me. So I was like, I'm gonna try to keep this as minimal as possible. We're sticking with preventative ingredients. If you are someone that has dry skin or dehydrated skin, you're going to wanna also incorporate nourishing ingredients, things that keep your skin happy underneath that mask because that will lessen your likelihood of irritation. Okay, so in the morning, I am not always a cleanse in the morning kind of person, but since this all started, I have definitely been a cleanse in the morning type person. I just couldn't imagine putting a mask on a face that hadn't been washed, if that makes any sense. Like it was just a mind game to me. I, you know, I don't wake up feeling particularly oily or like I particularly need to cleanse most days, but I do it anyway because I want that clean canvas. I don't want any like excess oil or bacteria or anything sitting on there waiting to be sandwiched between that fabric and my face. So I cleanse and I cleanse using the Holy Frog, Tashmu, Water Lily, uh, Nourishing Milky Wash, which is my go-to. It's so gentle. It's perfect for the mornings, even for people who have drier skin. It's just very nourishing, but it's effective. And I really, really, really love it. I love it so much. It's a holy grail. I mean, I've been using it forever. So I use this to create that clean, nice canvas and it works and I love it and I'm satisfied. So the second step in my routine is my treatment step. So this is where I put my ingredients which are intended to help prevent breakouts from occurring and treat breakouts that exist already. So this is where I use my azelaic acid, my BHA, whatever. I've made many videos about like treatments for acne that are effective but gentle and that's where I implement those ingredients in this particular routine is after I cleanse. So the product that I'm going to talk about the most is actually a prescription, but it is something that over-the-counter alternatives can be found for, which I will talk more uh, specifically about at the end of the video, but I failed to kind of really talk about what this step in my routine is, which is why this is Morgan from the future. I uh, am bopping in to explain myself because I failed once again. Now, back to, back to the past. So next is a prescription that I use, but you can definitely get similar products over the counter. This is from Apostrophe, which is a telehealth kind of dermatological service that you use online. So this topical is obviously a prescription. I've already mentioned that. It is an oxalic acid and niacinamide blend, and it is very, very gentle. So it is high in percentage, so it is potent in terms of what it actually is, but it is gentle enough to be used every day and the way it was prescribed to me multiple times a day. So the reason that I use this is because oxalic acid is my favorite actually if you've ever heard me talk about it it is one of my favorite ingredients for acne prone skin it is very gentle but it has a myriad of benefits it's anti-inflammatory it helps treat acne as well as prevent acne it helps with texture it helps with clarity and tone it's just a beautiful ingredient and niacinamide is as well so it has both of the benefits from those ingredients in one perfect little package and I love how gentle it is but it's so effective this is what I would consider the bulk of my AM routine because it is my treatment and because that is my primary focus in this routine and that is why I focus on using this pretty much every morning now there are mornings where I'm feeling a little bit more congested, a little bit more dull. You know, with hormonal changes throughout the month, things can shift around and things can present themselves differently. So on those mornings, I don't use this, I use this. I use the Paula's Choice 2% BHA liquid exfoliant. Now I can use this every day, like I said, I cannot use this every day. So that is why I alternate, that is why I'll use this once, maybe twice a week, it depends on the week, because this is extremely harsh. Now, I don't say that in a negative way because I honestly think that this is one of the best products I've ever put on my face, but not everyone can use it, not everyone will benefit from it, and not everyone will see the results they want to see from it. So this is amazing for clearing pores. It is amazing for clearing pores and it is amazing for maintaining the clarity of pores. Because of the way that it works, because of what it is, that is just what it does. It is excellent for targeting the center of 
pores, but it can be super drying. So tread lightly. If you're going to incorporate this, I highly recommend using it sparingly and using it very infrequently, but it is the product that I lean on when my skin is feeling extra congested, dull, and it just needs some help seriously. So after that step, if I'm feeling dry or like matte or tight at all, I will use a moisturizer. And lately I've been using the Bare Minerals Pureness Soothing Light Moisturizer. And the reason that I've been opting for this one is because it is very, very minimal and it is very, very lightweight. And I, I have issues with creams breaking me out sometimes, causing congestion. And this is so lightweight that I feel like it minimizes the risk of it causing congestion. It's just, it is quite hydrating, but it is very, very lightweight. So this is really the step that is going to be contingent entirely upon your skin type and your moisturizing preferences. So as I've said, I have normal skin at the moment and I am using a really lightweight moisturizer, sometimes only spot moisturizing. And if you have really dry skin, you're not going to want to follow my lead. You're going to want to use a moisturizer that's appropriate for your skin type. So if you're really dry, you need something heavier. You may need a hydrating serum in addition to that. It really just depends on you and your moisturizing needs. So that's something that you have to figure out kind of on your own terms and on your own time. I can't really tell that to you through a screen, obviously. And if you're oily, same thing. You just have to calibrate it based on your personal experience and your personal skin type when I use this in the mornings I kind of spot use it my skin is very like normal feeling at the moment so I don't feel like I need moisture all over my face but every now and then I will feel a little dryness in this area like my smile line area and I will use moisturizer there now if I'm feeling dry all over I'll put it all over eye cream so this is the eye cream I've been using and the reason that I've been opting for this one is because it is, in my opinion, brightening and I have not been wearing makeup below my lash line, which I will talk about in just a second after I finish going through my morning steps. So this is the Vita C Eyes Dark Circle Corrector from Murad. This is from their Environmental Shield line because vitamin C is an antioxidant which protects you from environmental aggressors. So this has sort of like a reflect in it. I don't know how else to explain it. It has sort of a yellowy tone and it is, in my opinion, brightening. It is one of the only eye creams that I've ever used that when I put it on, I immediately feel like my under eye area looks better in terms of brightness. And it is hydrating enough to keep my eye area comfortable. I do have somewhat dry eye areas. They're not super dry anymore, but they are, they are drier than the rest of my face. So I really like this and I also like that it has the added benefit of vitamin C because I do feel like it's giving protection to the eye area which is the most sensitive skin on the face. So next step is the last step for the morning and that is SPF. So the one that I have been using the most lately is the Weightless Liquid Mineral Sunscreen from First Aid Beauty. So the reason I've been opting for this is because it's tinted and it's one of the only tinted SPFs that I have that I feel works for me in any capacity at all. What I mean by that is that it doesn't break me out. It doesn't leave a weird residue on my skin. It's not super mattifying. There's no flashback with it. It doesn't make me look like a ghost. It just works for me, but it is too dark for my skin at the same time. So this is very lightweight. I would not call it hydrating, but I also wouldn't say that it's mattifying. It has sort of a glowy finish to it, which I really appreciate personally because I don't like matte skin really on myself. Um, I can do matte sometimes with foundations, but for the general day, I like a radiant finish as you can tell right now. And I do feel like this has some radiance to it. The thing about this is that it's too dark for me. <laughs> which is an issue that I tend to have. I am quite fair and tinted sunscreens tend to be, I feel more compatible with like light to medium skin tones and I'm more fair to light. So this is just like ever slightly too dark for me, but I make it work. I pull it down on my neck. I use bronzer on my forehead. I make it work because I really, really love the texture and the finish of it. I love the way that it applies. It never pills. I have been using it for probably about a month now. I'm going to be reviewing it, actually gonna film the review right after this video, so that will be up shortly, but I just really love it. It is truly weightless, it feels like nothing on the skin, and it's just a really lovely finish. I wish that they would come out with some darker tones of it and some lighter tones because I know for a fact that this shade would not work for everyone. My other go-to is obviously Unseen Sunscreen from Supergroup. I talk about this all the time. The only reason I opt for this one more frequently than this one these days is because of the tint. This evens the skin tone in a certain respect, and I like that because 
I'm not wearing foundation these days. So let's talk about makeup. Uh, I do wanna do that Get Ready With Me mask edition, but I'm just gonna talk about makeup really quickly because I feel like it's an important thing. If you are someone that wears makeup on the regular, like prior to this, I was a full face of makeup every day at work kind of person and I liked it that way and I still do like it that way and I honestly miss it a lot because at this moment, I don't wear anything below my lower lash line. No under eye concealer, no foundation, no blush, nothing below my lower lash line. I've been doing, you know, a little bit of concealer on my forehead, some bronzer on my forehead, my brows and my eyes, and that is it. Which is why I've been opting for the brightening eye cream because I'm not wearing under eye concealer to conceal any of my perceived flaws. <laughs> and the reason I've been doing that is because I really don't even want to know what my skin would look like with makeup sandwiched between a mask and my skin for seven hours a day. So it's really a better safe than sorry kind of scenario. I can't say for sure that it would fully break me out, but I just feel like it would. Yeah, so I've just been opting to not do that. I've just been doing lower lash line up and it's been fine. I miss the routine of getting ready in the morning and all of that stuff. But for the time being, I feel like this is the best way to preserve the quality of my skin. So at night I get home, I rip my face mask off, and I pretty much immediately do my nighttime skincare routine when I get home. So what I do is I take off my makeup. Uh, I use the Glossier Milky Oil to take off my eye makeup because it's really gentle and it's really effective. And I have been wearing a lot more eye makeup recently just because it's like all I've got. <laughs> So I've been using this. I love this. It's one of my favorites. I've mentioned it a bazillion times. It's gentle. It's effective. It's nice. I just really, really like it. And then I cleanse. I double cleanse. Even though I'm not wearing makeup on the lower half of my face, I do like to do a double cleanse just to make sure I'm getting all the sunscreen off, all of the concealer off, all of everything off. So I've been using the Holy Frog Toshmu as my first and second cleanse. I know like technically when you look up a double cleanse it's supposed to be different cleansers and there's supposed to be different types of cleansers but honestly this works for me this works perfectly well for me actually and i don't mind it at all i feel like this dissolves any makeup anyway but it is my preferred method of cleansing at the moment just because it's so gentle and i know it's not going to irritate my skin so i double cleanse using this both times and i'm happy with that then i use my ozolaic acid again Next, I use my apostrophe tretinoin, and I have been using this every night. Again, that's the way that this was prescribed to me. I did not start off using it every night. I actually didn't use this for probably a week after I got it, and then I started with every other day, and then I just kind of transitioned into every day because I've experienced no side effects from using this. No peeling, no flaking, no dryness, no nothing. So, I mean, maybe this doesn't even have tretinoin in it. I don't know, but tretinoin, retinoids, whatever, are 100% the best course of action for me in terms of acne management. My acne is completely different since I started using tretinoin as a regular treatment and my skin is so much clearer, just period, point blank, uh, since I've been using this. Now, at the end of this video or after I finish my nighttime routine, I am going to talk about some over-the-counter options for the two apostrophe products I have, so just stay tuned for that. But tretinoin, if you're someone that deals with acne that you feel is unmanageable, I definitely recommend talking to a dermatologist about tretinoin. It's one of the easier options for acne management, let's just put it that way. And I really, I believe in it fully, wholeheartedly. It is totally change my skin. I'm a big, big fan. And I, I've loved this one so far because like I said, I haven't had any negative side effects. And lastly, I also use this in the morning, but I forgot to mention it. I use a lip mask. So I have found that one of the most pronounced issues that I have experienced from wearing a mask all day is one, redness on the bridge of my nose where it rubs, but two, my lips feel so dehydrated by the end of the day. I do not know why, but when I take that mask off at the end of the day, when I take it off when I get in my car, I, I can just feel it. My lips feel so dry. Don't know why, couldn't tell you if that's a common thing, but that is definitely what I've experienced. So I've been using the Agave Lip Mask nighttime therapy from Bite Beauty. And I've also been using the Milk Makeup Melatonin Overnight Lip Mask. So I mostly use this one at night, like before I go to bed, and I've mostly been using this one in the morning and right after I do my skincare routine when I get home from work. And I love this. I don't know what took me so long to really dive into this. I'm pretty like new to it, but I am obsessed. It smells amazing, it feels amazing, and I really feel like 
even though my, my lips feel bad when I get off work, I feel like they're in the best condition they've ever been. And I think it's because of the diligence with using my lip masks morning and evening and night. So yeah. Okay, so this video is really, really long, but I do wanna touch on some over-the-counter alternatives for uh, retinoid and an oxalic acid if that's something that you're interested in trying. So for oxalic acid, my recommendation will always be the Paula's Choice 10% oxalic acid booster. I will film a little clip of me showing you it and the texture of it so that you can see what it looks like. Um, it is just really, really good, really, really reliable. It is one that I fully trust and fully recommend and it's easily available. You can order it online. As far as alternatives to the retinoid, to tretinoin, um, Over-the-counter retinoids act differently than prescription retinoids, but they do have similar effects. Again, my recommendation would be to get a retinoid from Paula's Choice. I just really trust Paula's Choice formulas, especially for active ingredients, especially for treatments. They have a retinol booster. They have a 1% retinol uh, treatment. They have a 0.25% retinol with Bacu Bacuchiol. I don't know if I'm saying that right, which I use on my neck and I think is excellent. They just have a lot of options, a lot of flexibility in like potency and all of that stuff. So I think that that's a really good resource and I will link some options down below. I will also link apostrophe if you're interested in trying them out. I mean, um, it is like a dermatological service and it is in my opinion, not super cheap. So I have been back to work, I think three weeks now. I think that I am finishing up my third week and so far so good. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm knocking on wood because I'm just nervous. I just, I stay nervous about my skin. I mean, obviously I'm nervous about other things, but like my skin is something that I care deeply about and I don't want to have any terrible side effects from wearing a mask every day. So yeah, I would love to hear, are you having to wear a mask when you go to work? Are you working from home? What What's up? Um, like I said, it's a requirement where I work and I don't love it, but it is what it is. I'm just trying to make the best out of the situation. What are you changing up with what you're doing in your routine right now? I'd love to hear. I know the seasons are transitioning, so a lot of people are switching up things that they're doing anyway, and that's just always kind of a fun time in my opinion. It's like a caterpillar turning into a butterfly every like three months because we get to change things up. Okay, I'm rambling now. This video is really long. I'm super sorry about it. I hope you enjoyed it though, and I will talk to you all soon. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks. Bye.